Department. Let's welcome our Alpha Manager for the day then. Uh, we have Aditya Khemani joining us, uh, a Fund Manager of Mozilla Loswal AMC. Uh, Aditya, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us. In fact, let me make banks my first question because uh, you know we have seen quite a bit of a reversal this month in terms of stocks like HDFC Bank, Kotak making a bit of a comeback. Uh, but what would be your view on the large financials? Sure. Uh, good afternoon, Anuj. So, if we look at banking, I mean, last three years has been very bad for banking. I mean, we've seen a lot of crisis in the economy. And whenever there's a crisis in the economy, banking as a sector does not do well, uh, very well. And COVID has been the mother of all crises. So last three years, if you look at Bank Nifty, it would be up by 20, 25%. So uh, up. So it has underperformed the Nifty by a long way. But I think now, if I have to choose one sector to play for the next two, three years, for me, banking would be that sector. Because what we've seen over the last one year, I mean, no one thought before we entered COVID that the asset quality of especially the large financiers will behave the way they did. And especially uh, the biggest public sector bank and the top four, five uh, private sector banks, they have their asset quality has turned on very well. And more importantly, if you look at last 10 year data, I mean, 10 years back, the top six financier had a market share of 37%. But that market share has risen to 50% last year, which means we've seen a seen a meaningful increase in the market share of the last 10 years. And further, if you break that market share data up, last three year, last four years, these top six financiers have taken 70% incremental market share, which tells you that well-run financial company will keep on taking market share. Hence, uh, I would be very positive, uh, uh, mostly in terms of the top financier, in case we take a two, three year time frame. And also, if you look at the balance sheet, I mean, right now, the balance sheet, most of the top financiers have, including SBI, I mean, it's very good. Their uh, NPA ratios are closer to 1, 1.5%. Uh, their uh, provision ratio is closer to 80, 90%. On top of that, they have uh, around 1% kind of provision to take care of further stress emanating from the COVID book. So net-net, the balance sheet seemed to be in a very good good position uh, on the PNL side. Obviously, credit cost was a bit higher last year, but uh, that credit cost will turn very fast next one year, next one year, 18 months. So net-net, I think I would be very positive on the financial space. space. And to top that up with uh, valuation has also been a concern in a lot of sectors in the market. But if you look at financials, this is one sector where the valuation is much lesser than what it has been over the last three, five years. You look at the uh, bigger private sector bank like ADFC, Kotak Bank, the valuation is lesser than what it was three, four years back. You look at Axis Bank or ICSA Bank or SBI Bank. I mean, valuation is very comfortable in this space. So for me, uh, banking would be the sector to play in case one is taking a one year, two year, three year time frame uh, on the overall market side. Mm. Uh, uh, fair enough. And I mean, your portfolio reflects that. And I have a question on uh, banking, but you know, the market, uh, if there was any panic or anything of that sort, I think that has largely now uh, disappeared. The Nifty is down 20 points. Small cap index is still down 1%, but it's off the lows by quite a bit. And the mid cap index is down just a quarter percent. So it's coming back into the flat zone. In the morning, market breadth was 8 is to 1 in favor of declines. Uh, it's not even 3 is to 1. I mean, it's still negative. Uh, but I think it's more like two is to one, two and a half is to one in favor of declines. Uh, so there's been a, I mean, sea change. And I think it's happening uh, even more now. Just 10 points left on the Nifty. Will we uh, tick back into the green? We will see. Aditya, you know, within banking, there are those uh, who say, well, you know, HDFC for ex uh, Bank, for example, has had a, a brilliant run and now it's the time for ICICI Bank to do well. I mean, those kind of... so. You know they are rel relative to the to their respective weights. That bank's weight in the index overweight a particular bank relative to others. I mean the most common I've heard is ICICI versus HDFC Bank. Uh, do do you have uh, do you reflect that kind of thinking in the portfolio because you own both? I think. If you look at the portfolio, Prashant, you would look that ICICI Bank is the biggest weightage in the portfolio. It's around nine ten percent weightage in the portfolio. And HDFC Bank would be around 4% weightage in the portfolio. So I think my holding clearly reflects my preference within the financial space. Because uh, if you look at last 10 years, I mean, uh, obviously I cannot comment on banks, but uh, one thing you have to see that where is the valuation of different financiers. And if you look at... 
Okay. Okay. Performance across top financiers. There's not too much of difference between an ICICI bank or an HDFC bank or an Axis bank at this juncture. Uh, so I think valuation is a more important part uh, where I would choose one bank over the other within the top three for financier pressure. Talking about valuations, uh, Aditya, I see Zomato is part of uh, you know the holding. Uh, interesting one. I was just going to ask you whether or not you'll buy a company that doesn't make profits, but you seem to be quite interested in the space. How do you view it? This tech-related space, uh, you believe there's tremendous uh, play out here? Uh, sure, Nigel. I mean, obviously, again, I cannot comment on stock, but I will give you a broad perspective. Uh, this was a stock, uh, we were lucky to have it as an anchor allocation. So it came in at a much lower price from that point. But uh, I mean, one thing, whether a company makes loss or makes a profit, it's I think uh, the choice of the management. So in case a company is going at a very fast pace, it wants to slow down growth. Obviously, the company can show profit today also. But uh, I think there's one thing uh, we uh, private uh, public investors will kind of understand in future how to value these companies which have been valued in the public market. So I think there is some bit of disconnect between how we used to value these names and how a private market used to value these names. But one thing you have to remember, uh, this is a space uh, in terms of uh, food, uh, food tech space that has a long runway to go. I mean, looking at what we've seen in markets like US, China, there's a long runway to, for growth in a space like a food tech space. So obviously, any company present in that space will kind of do well in times to come. Obviously, it's a question of valuation. I mean, so valuation is something which is important. But in case you have a five-year, ten-year horizon, mm -hmm. I think at points of time, you can kind of uh, take a bet on a company which is slightly expensive also. Okay. okay by the way, just uh, look at Tata Steel. Uh, there's a fresh breakout happening on that stock now. Uh, ahead of earnings. Now, you know, uh, it's interesting, Aditya, uh, you know, this, uh, over the last couple of days, I was talking to a couple of people who were making this point that this steel rally perhaps is not even halfway through. In terms of uh, PE expansion, there's a lot more to go. Uh, would you be in that camp? Or would you add some of the metal names even at this price? Uh, look, Anuj, from a metal point of view, obviously last two, three years, most of these metal companies have done very well. I mean, the balance sheet has been completely repaired. Plus, their uh, their margin look to be. I mean, they are making super normal profit at this juncture. But I think there are a lot of blind space in this sector. Uh, I've seen last 15, 16 years, whenever commodity prices uh, go up and these companies make money, people argue for a point that this profit is there to stay. But I mean, suddenly something happens which lead to commodity prices coming down. And we should not forget. China is a big joker in the pack. I mean, when a country controls 50, 60, 70% of any metals production, I mean, the policy changes there will have a big bearing in terms of how the commodity prices behave. So from an operating leverage point of view, some bit of price uptake or downtick has a big bearing in terms of earning. So uh, obviously today, their balance sheet looks to be in a much better position, but I would I think we're, we're losing that link, Aditya. Uh, in any case, we we're running out of time, but uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, good having that conversation with you. Perhaps next time we'll get a better link. Uh, we need to take a break. Uh, up next